So this is a right-sided anominate counternutation. So it's an anterior pelvic tilt. And many of the same uh, restrictions or limitations are going to occur. You're going to have the trigger point in the TFL. You're going to have fascial restrictions. So to treat my client, I have better access to treat my client in a sideline. So I can start my fascial um, techniques in a sideline position. So following our basics, we would go with our indirect, anchoring our tissue at one end, doing a cross-hand spread, engaging the tissue until we meet that resistance, and just moving our hands more laterally away from each other, waiting for 90 seconds for creep to occur. Our more direct techniques, we can involve a glide. In this situation, our client has a little bit of hair, so we want to keep that in mind. If it's tolerable for the client, you can do a full glide rather than a partial glide, providing it's within your client's pain tolerance and not irritating, um, and not irritating them at all by pulling on their hair. You okay with that technique? Yep. With fascial restrictions in the IT band, you will often find that vastus lateralis on one side or biceps femoris on the other side will be adhered to the structure, or they both will be. So you can come in with a bit of pressure on your fingertips, still can, being consistent with your fascial glides, and just separating those structures away from each other by providing a glide along the attachment points. You can use a double stack thumb to do the same thing and do partial glides. Nice and slow, engaging the fascia, the fat, the skin, and the musculature below. Working vastus lateralis and biceps femoris. Finding out where your greatest restriction might be as it adheres to that IT bend. You can use your forearm, engaging, stacking your joints, your shoulder and your elbow so as not to apply undue stress to yourself, double stacking on top of your arm and applying the pressure with the glide, moving distally to proximal. or we can apply our skin rolling. Picking up our tissue, which is often going to be harder at the more distal end, you will find that it will pucker in places. So if it does, just let the tissue soften until you can pick it up into your fingers and continue your roll. If you find an area of restriction that doesn't want to pick up, just wait for the creep to occur or provide a bit of a SIBO, waiting for the release of the tissue. Once you felt a release, you can continue with your skin rolling. Once you have completed this with your IT band, you can move to vastus lateralis and do the same treatment, nice and slow, or biceps femoris. You would treat your trigger point the same way that we had done in the last video, isolating where your trigger point is and doing a trigger point release with a stretch. From this point here, our stretch, we can just bring our limb into more extension, more medial rotation, and applying a stretch from here. Holding the stretch for 30 seconds. Applying heat hydrotherapy onto our trigger point or sending our client home with home care for heat hydrotherapy. SIS, in the other hand, on the ischial tuberosity, I'm going to apply a force where my most superior hand will move posteriorly and my distal hand is going to move anteriorly. Going into a grid one, two, 
and three, holding for eight to 10 seconds. Coming back out to our grade two, going back to our grade three sustained, holding eight to 10 seconds, and repeating this technique two to three times. So in order to help us facilitate the correction of our left innominate nutation, we're going to place a bolster on underneath the right ASIS. So left innominate rotation or posterior pelvic tilt going to have some fascial restrictions on the IT band into vastus or sorry biceps femoris rather and probably trigger points in the tensor fascia lata muscle. So to facilitate our fascial release I can place my client in a slight bit of external rotation and I'm going to anchor and do my crossed hand spread as an indirect fascial technique. Waiting for 90 seconds for the creep to occur. Just engaging the skin, the fascia, and the fat. And then I can provide my direct techniques. Keeping in mind with our direct techniques with our client, due to the amount of hair on the leg, we want to watch our movements so that our glide is not a full glide and within our client's pain tolerance. We can use our palmer surface, engage the skin, the fascia, the fat, and the musculature below it. And we can start to create a slight bit of glide. Moving to the next area, and again gliding to the point of resistance, and moving to the next area. The IT band is its narrowest point, closer to the lateral aspect of the knee. So we can isolate that with a fascial technique by applying pressure from the superior aspect, webbing, and waiting for the fascial release. We can provide an S, an S bow to the structure. So I'm looking for a trigger point in the TFL. I'm going to palpate, looking for my jump sign or a recreation of symptoms for my client. Once I've located the trigger point, I'm going to apply ischemic compressions for 20 seconds to a minute until I feel a release of the trigger point or the client has indicated that the symptoms have decreased. Following a decrease of the trigger point, we're going to flush the area and stretch. We're going to send our client home with heat hydrotherapy for this area. With a right counter nutation of the anominate, the quadriceps will often be short, so we're going to do a PNF from a sideline position. So I'm just going to take my client into a bit of hip extension 
having his foot just resting on my iliac crest. I'm going to turn my body a little more lateral so I can use my hip. And I'm going to just provide gentle resistance against his ankle towards his gluteals. And I'm going to ask him to resist and don't let me move you while he tries to straighten his leg against that resistance for eight seconds, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. And I'm just going to move my body closer to his gluteals and ask again for that resistance, trying to straighten his leg against my resistance. Don't let me move you. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, relax, moving into my next barrier, repeating this two to three times, and on the last cycle, I'm going to hold this stretch for 30 seconds so I can elongate the tissues of the quads. So in this condition we have a left innominate rotation which is a posterior pelvic tilt so we want to correct it with our bolstering and this will help to us facilitate um, our treatment so we're going to just take this under the left side greater trochanter obviously I'm doing this with linens but you would do it underneath the linens and this is going to take that posterior pelvic tilt into an anterior pelvic tilt we're going to facilitate this by placing our bolster on the other side to counteract this particular bolstering. So we want to mobilize our joint anteriorly, so placing our hand on the sacrum, our more distal hand just underneath the knee, and we're going to lift the knee up while we stabilize the sacrum to increase anterior rotation. Going into a grade three sustained, holding eight to 10 seconds, coming back to a grade two, and up to a grade three. And repeating two or three times. Now, if you find that you're, you can't lower your table in order to help facilitate this lift, you can towel up your knee and just place it underneath and then use that to help facilitate your lift, placing your hands on the sacrum and stabilizing there while you lift your body and facilitate the lift up. <laughs> 